I mean, the, the most uh, familiar part of this case that people know about, Steve obviously doesn't talk about too much, was the water formings. And in particular, one of the water formings that we had the, um, he was lucky enough to be able to capture on film on camera and take samples of the water and then also take separate samples from different areas of the house, go up in the attic and check. There was no wet spots, there was no leaks or anything like that from anywhere above. Take it away, have the water sampled by a professional organisation, the British... No, it was the North West Water, North West water Laboratories. Laboratories. It was tested and the differences between the water were so immense that they even commented, we don't know how that's done. Um, for the technical well, minded... That, what's added to the water? What, well, well, I'll, I'll explain that. For the technical minded, um, water content has an electrical charge. When we, when we draw it out from the tap, mm -hmm. water passing through a copper pipe creates friction, electrical charge. The, and that the electrical charge is measured in UCSMs. And the water board will know that. What's the UCSM? The UCSM is the amount of electrical charge in water. Okay. It's, how, it's what they refer to the electrical charge in water okay. because it's passing through conduits with, of copper. Okay. Um, so when we draw a glass of water, there's a certain amount of electrical charge in there, right. which can be measured. Now, normally on a glass of water, they say reckon normal tap water about 93 UCSMs, which is an average. It's harm, harmful, you know, uh, not harmful, I should say. It's, it doesn't do any good. And we, what we've done is we took a control sample from the taps because we were trying to prove the council can't be right here at Washdale Council because the family, are, they're, not, they're not doing this. Mm. So where's the water coming from? So we took samples of the tap water and there was on a couple of occasions, but one of the nights we watched in amazement, four of us stood in the hall as water ran across the ceiling. Uh, and it wasn't dripping at the time either, it was running across. What, what, uh, was it it, it's very difficult to explain, it was defined gravity as I was speaking, it moved an arc around the ceiling. So was it like somebody pouring something on this table? And it was, yeah, it was, it was in a, fact, if, if I'd got this glass of water and gone like that, but somehow controlled the water to arc, right. that's, that what, I, that's what four of us were, were watching on the ceiling happening underneath. And we're, we're stood under it, watching it, and it's not dripping. And we couldn't, we couldn't believe what we were seeing, so we, we did manage to get a sample of it. We got it, caught it, fantastic. Get down to uh, uh, Northwest Water Laboratories as soon as we possibly can, because as you know, water evaporates at every temperature, you know, it won't stay. Yeah. So the sooner the analysis, the better. So we gave them the control sample, we gave them the suspect sample, and they ran. Um, the tap water was nothing unusual, tap water you know, um, 93 UCSMs average. The water from the ceiling, um, they scratched their head on it a bit because they measured 2,900 and something UCSMs. 2,900? Yeah, this, this water was yeah. profoundly electrically charged. They don't know how that can happen. There was obviously traces of um, um, a couple of chemicals in there which are found through was actually scraping the ceiling, that's how good they are. They could tell, they, could, they actually told us, you scrape the ceiling when you actually took the sample slightly because you've got British gypsum, this, that and the other, these wow. chemicals, and you can say, well, that's from the paint, that's from the plaster, and da-da-da-da-da. They were absolutely fantastic, but they could not explain So it's almost what 300 going times on. the, the, the exactly. safe amount yeah. that you would have in a glass. Now, the problem you're going to have here for, for some people, with some beliefs who are watching this programme, is putting two and two together and saying, well, that electrical charge and the electrical charge when Steve felt when it hit by an unknown force, does that in some way indicate electricity as part of the poltergeist? They're going to go hunting for electrical means in a building and then everyone's got poltergeist. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, there probably was some electrical contact to it, you know, the, the phenomenon itself. I mean, it's referred, if you, if you study the poltergeist phenomenon, that um, for, for one incident to take place over here, the last incident has to, has, has to dissipate. Yes. For instance, if you have a water forming that appears, which sometimes you get different types of formings, mm -hmm. there has been, uh, over the years, tar reported. Even in Canada, there was a case where blood was reported. Yeah. Uh, Oresis negative. Apparently, it was neither of the people that lived there, either. Um, uh, but the now case, water forming, that would have to disappear for the next phenomenon to use because potty ice phenomenon utilises the fears and energies created from the individuals that witness phenomena. 
Pulse has someone who doesn't waste its actions. You know, you know, is, it has to be around is, to see them. But this is whole thing about the, 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 the poltergeist thing is that it, it, it and, and a lot of ghost energy. I mean, that's why your seances are said to work because they're using your energy and they're using your energy as a force to, as, a, as a conduit to come to the earth and yeah. do what they want to do. And, and I think I, I kind of understand people at home saying, because of what happened to you, and the way you explained it was like an energy electrical shock hitting you in the back, this thump mm -hmm. that you got, plus this sort of 300 times the acceptable level of, of, of electricity and water is coming from the ceiling. But is there some energy that is escaping from that house or around that building mm. that we, we can't measure yet, only in physical form? You measured yeah. it, you, or you felt yeah. it yeah. in a non-physical form. I mean, well, it was physical well, to you, I mean, it hit you, wasn't we, it? We did use all, the, all the, the normal type of equipment that we would normally use to do uh, baseline tests throughout the whole building, the area the building is located. Um, and we got no adverse anomalies reported to us, no spikes in GMF, EMF, no microwave, no, nothing and unusual. And you, you would expect their, their, their electricity bills to be kind of... Yeah, a bit sporadic. Fairly yeah. sporadic if, if they're losing electricity. Because there's quite often, I mean, one of the things that I know, I know quite a few people uh, uh, believe that these balls of light that we see. I know we, we've, we've spoken about balls of light moving around people and, and all this. Um, that they are some, in some way, escaped energy that forms together. We don't quite understand it, but we'll do that because energy mm. stays. It doesn't. Yeah. It, it doesn't go. It's it'll go, and then it might fade a little bit. Well, go. this is an area that I mean we've been studying quite in depth, and it also relates to the ufological side of of things as well. What the Earth light consists of is when they. Teutonic plates are rubbing together, cause friction, cause a ball of light to be released. This is happening everywhere. We've got people don't realise that the UK have got an, an absolutely amazing amount of fault lines, and we have more earthquakes, mini earthquakes, than actually people realise. There's actually a, a, an organisation based down in London who follow this, and they can tell you all about earthquakes. You, you contact the British Seismological Survey team; they'll tell you exactly the same. So these things are going on continuously. A lot of them we've found are actually built on some Stone Age sites as well, some ancient monuments and mm -hmm. such like. But if your house is under a certain location where these frictionless plates are rubbing together and causing a small ball of light, then you've got possibly an orb, as we'll term it. It's not the orb of the paranormal sense, it's not an orb of the dust, it's not an insect, etc, etc. It's another type, another variety entirely, and which is a very, very small sort of percentage we believe are actually being captured. Yeah, there's, there's a number of sections which have to be really sort of looked into, and that is this uh, section of NEA, these natural electrical anomalies. Mm -hmm. Things that we really do sort of have to open up and look at. Yeah. It's, it's funny though, isn't it? Because because that but what you're talking about is something that's plausible. It's, it, you see it, you can feel it, you, you, you can you, you know you want to touch it, but but it's there. And a lot of the, lot of the other stuff that the, what we term the paranormal orbs are kind of it's interpretation of what you're seeing on infrared cameras. A lot of it, and you know on, on digital photography, which is you know kind of and I think 99% of that are. Well, one of the photographs in particular that we've seen it actually shows Moses shows a small ball of light near to a, um, a, a certain board and it actually gives a shadow as well and it's a significant shadow actually offers something totally different to anything well, else we've seen. That is it's, what you need, you it, need that shadow and it's funny because I've not even really thought of that. We have, we've got, a, we've got a ball of light that's giving off its own luminosity to the point where you can see its reflection in the skirting board paint. So that's, that's super and that's a, but we're going to carry on talking about this after the break but please don't go away and we'll only be a couple of minutes.